Salutations, I'm the Ventral of Adam, and welcome to the next installment of the VKMT Halo Mod Tutorial Series. I'm sorry this episode took so long to come out. Myself and the other VKMT members have been busy these past few months, and this series ended up being put to the wayside. I can't promise these will come out on a consistent basis, but I do want to continue making them when I have time. The community deserves these resources, and I'd like to see new and upcoming modders show their stuff. The last episode had us covering the editing kit's tag editor, Gorilla. This episode will focus on the scenario editor, Sapien. This program is where the magic happens. Sapien is used to bring your map to life. You can place down objects such as weapons, vehicles, scenery, AI squads, and a whole lot more. I'll be starting this tutorial with Halo CE, but I will also be mentioning the other versions of Sapien as each game added more features to it. With all that said, let's begin. We'll start by finding the Sapien program in your Mod Tools directory. We need to find a scenario tag. Let's open Halo CE's tutorial scenario. We'll go to Levels, Test, Tutorial, then open the tutorial.scenario file. Once the scenario is loaded, you'll notice that your window layout looks cascaded like this. You can change your window positions in any way you want and even use a preset in the window tab to make the process faster. The game viewer shows you the map itself, and will be your conduit to place down whatever you want within it. The hierarchy view displays all of the assets that are currently loaded in the map. The left side of the window shows the object type, organized in folder trees, and the right side shows the actual objects of the given type that you selected on the left. The Properties window showcases the properties of whatever you select in either Hierarchy View or Game View, whether it's for an object, an AI squad, trigger volumes, and so on. You won't be relying on the Output window much, but it's mostly used to point out any mistakes during script compilation. As for the Tool window, it displays a set of options depending on what you have selected in the Hierarchy view. If you have a physical object selected, you can do things like turning off the given axes for an object you don't have selected allowing you to pinpoint a specific object much faster. In later games, such as Halo 2, there's a setting where you can only have a specific object be displayed in the game view, and I like to use this when working with trigger volumes. I'll talk about what a trigger volume is in a future episode dedicated to scripting. Now that we know what each window is for, let's actually start some scenario editing. Before we go and start placing objects down, we need to know what type of scenario we want. Campaign or multiplayer? In the Hierarchy view, click on the Mission folder, then look at the Properties window. The drop-down box on top shows which kind of maps we can make the scenario. Whichever one we pick will determine what type of objects we'll want to place down later. For now, let's have Tutorial stay as a multiplayer map. Let's click on the plus sign next to Mission in Hierarchy view. This will reveal more of the Hierarchy tree that shows what type of objects we'd like to place down. Let's collapse the Objects tree then click on Units, then click on Vehicles. As you can see, there are vehicles placed on the level already. Let's place another one down. Go to the Game window, and I'll teach you how to navigate it. To activate in-game controls, hold your middle mouse button, and then when you want to deactivate them, release it. While holding your middle mouse button, you can look around by moving your mouse. Use WASD to move forward, left, backward, and right, respectively then R to move up, and F to move down. You can hold two of any of these keys to move in different ways, such as moving diagonally to the left by holding W and A at the same time. If you want to change your camera speed, there's a few ways to do this. Hitting the shift key, scrolling up or down, or holding control for a temporary speed boost. Now that we've learned the controls, let's place a vehicle down. Release your middle mouse button, and make sure you have the vehicle folder selected in the hierarchy view. Right click anywhere on the map in the game view and a set of axes will appear wherever you right clicked. Depending on what was currently selected in the vehicle palette, either a vehicle will appear alongside the axes or nothing at all. You can also further change the position of your placed object, and there are two ways to do this. You can either select the axes in game view and move it around yourself, or you can use the Properties window and make specific XYZ coordinate edits. The same can be done with Object Rotation. In Game View, there are these three arrows that modify an object's yaw, pitch, and roll values. 
Holding these and moving your mouse around will change the object's rotation. If you want values that are more specific, like a 90 degree yaw angle, simply go to the properties window and type 90 in the Y box. You can edit two or more objects at the same time. Let's spawn another ghost right next to this one. In hierarchy view, hold down the control key and select both of these ghosts. Now let's have them both face 45 degrees. In properties, type 45 in the Y box and both vehicles will look at a 45 degree angle. What if we want more vehicle types than just the Warthog and Ghost? Let's add more vehicles to our vehicle palette. At the top of hierarchy view, click on the edit types box. This shows us the current vehicle palette. Now click add, then go to tags, vehicles, R Warthog, then click on the R Warthog vehicle tag, which is the multiplayer exclusive Rocket Warthog. Now click the add tags box to the bottom right. Let's also add the multiplayer version of the Banshee. Go back to the vehicles directory, then go to Banshee, then click Banshee underscore multiplayer dot vehicle. Since we're working with a multiplayer map, it's best to use the types of vehicle tags that are balanced for multiplayer. For example, the multiplayer versions of the Banshee and Ghost are indestructible, unlike their campaign counterparts. Click on add tags to add the Banshee to our palette. The dialog box now shows our newly added vehicles. Click OK, right click anywhere on the map, then change the vehicle type to one of our new vehicles. That's how you add new objects to your level. Now I'd like to go over weapons. Within the tutorial scenario, there are actual weapon spawns placed, but we don't currently see any on the map, just the vehicles. In the hierarchy view, collapse the items box, then click weapons, only to see no weapons? Did I just lie to you? Actually, no. There are weapons on the map, but they're not weapon tags. Instead, since this is a multiplayer map, they're using a type of tag called an item collection, which are multiplayer exclusive tags that spawn and respawn specific items during a match. These allow Halo 1's game type system to make changes based on your game type settings. Maybe you don't want any Covenant weapons to spawn, so the game will take whatever is in those item collection spawns and change them to their human counterparts. In the properties window, when selecting an item collection, you can control which game types these items can spawn in, whether it's for all games or just for Capture the Flag, for example. Halo 1 and Halo 2 use item collections, with Halo 2 even using vehicle collection tags. Halo 3 was when item collections were discontinued, and the game type system now recognizes the weapon and vehicle tags. Now, why do you not want to place a weapon tag in a multiplayer map? As I said, the game will not recognize it as a multiplayer item. It will spawn on the map, but it cannot be swapped out for another weapon in the game type settings, and when you pick up the weapon, another copy of it will never respawn in its place. Let's say you are working on a campaign map, however. Let's get a weapon tag into the map. Go back to the weapons folder in items, then edit options, then add, go to the weapons directory, plasma rifle, then plasma underscore rifle dot weapon. We'll also pick up the assault rifle, so go to the ARs directory and grab the weapon tag as well. Right click anywhere on the map and set the weapon to the plasma rifle, then right click again and place the assault rifle. For the plasma rifle we're pretty much all set, however we need to give the assault rifle ammo. Scroll down in the properties window until you see the rounds loaded and rounds left boxes. Rounds loaded depicts how much ammo this weapon will have in the loaded magazine. Rounds left will be for how much spare ammo it'll have. Let's put 60 for rounds loaded and 180 for rounds left. Now when you pick up the assault rifle, it'll have a full magazine and 180 spare rounds of ammo. Let's talk about bipeds. Go to the unit subfolder and hit bipeds. Edit types, add, then go to characters, cyborg, and cyborg.biped. Then right click anywhere on the map and spawn your Spartan biped. Now, this Spartan doesn't have any AI whatsoever. It's just the unit in its idle animation. You can also spawn a dead biped. Click the dead checkbox on the bottom, then spawn another biped. You typically use this as a decorator for a scene, like when you find a dead marine alongside ammo boxes. Let's say we want to actually spawn a biped with AI. We'll need to make an AI squad. Before we do this, however, I need to address something very important. It's possible to have AI spawn on a multiplayer map, but I wouldn't recommend doing this. 
Halo 1's AI do not synchronize over MCC's online gameplay. This means the host will see one thing, while the clients will see different things related to the AI on this map. Could be alive for some, dead for others, on different sides of the map, etc. Only spawn AI for single player maps. Go to the AI folder, click on Encounters, and click New Instance. Collapse the Encounter box and let's give this squad a name. We'll go with Ron. Go to Squads and click New Instance. Then click on Edit Types and find the Actor Variant class. In future Halo games, these would be called Characters. Click Add, then Characters, Elite, Elite Major, then add the Elite Major Needler variant. Click on the squad we made, then have the actor type be the Needler Elite Major. Now scroll down to Normal and Insane Diff Count. These control how many actors will spawn depending on the game's difficulty, with Insane representing Legendary and Normal being the other three difficulties. Set both to 1. Now click on the Starting Locations folder, then right click anywhere on the map. This is Ron's spawn point. Now let's spawn him. Hit the tilde key to bring up the command prompt. Type in the following. AI underscore place Ron. Now we have an elite that actually has a brain and is aware of his surroundings. The last feature I want to discuss is player simulation. Starting with Halo 2, you can actually spawn yourself and play within the game view window. In Halo 2 Sapien, go to game data then click on Player Simulation. Right-click anywhere on the map and you'll see a character spawn on the level. Click Tab, and now you can move around as a player character. This is great for on-the-fly testing for whatever you're doing. Sadly, Halo 1 doesn't have this feature for Sapien, so you'll need to load your scenario in the Tag Test build. Let's save our scenario under a different name, such as Test. Then open Tag Test. Once you're in the main menu, bring up the command prompt with a tilde key, and type in map underscore name, followed by the path to your scenario tag. In this instance, it'll be map underscore name, levels, test, tutorial, test. Now, we'll be in the scenario we modified in Sapien. And that'll do it for this tutorial. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to never miss another upload. This is the Ventral Vadim. Always remember that you matter more than you think you do, and I'll see you on the great journey.